We're off to a very good start, as you know, with the great tax cuts and ANWR and getting rid of the individual mandate, which was very, very unpopular, as you know. The stock market, I think, is going to continue to go up. Companies are going to continue to come into the country. We have been seeing people bundled up. Can't, it's been actually very quiet, and I think that's because people are trying to conserve their energy. Five sheriff's deputies shot, one of them killed, while responding to a domestic disturbance in suburban Denver. He was doing his job. He was doing his job well, and uh, his life was taken um, from us uh, this morning. The president has put a lot of focus on the events happening in Iran, those protests now into their fourth day. The president has tweeted Iran, the number one state of sponsored terror with numerous violations of human rights occurring on an hourly basis, has now closed down the internet so that peaceful demonstrators cannot communicate. Not good. Next weekend, President Trump will hash out the GOP's top priorities for 2018 with Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell in a meeting at Camp David. We are going to have a tremendous year. Still going and Fox and Friends land here. Good morning. That was a Todd Pirro request. Oh, not uh, just specifically. Not, not just me. You saw morning. floor director Dave like breaking it down at 6 a.m. And I, I saw you breaking it down. Too, were you friend. guys dancing while we were starting the show? I think they were. Potentially. Hopefully yeah. with coffee and maybe in pajamas. That was a hard. I, they didn't leave the J Lo on for very long, did they? We need more J Lo. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It's our request for 2018. Well, what, what, what you ask, you get. You know, so. <laughs> Uh, give, the, give the people what they want. <laughs> and that's how we're starting a happy new year. 2018 has arrived. It has. It has. And, it, and it's so funny because I remember on Saturday I kept being like, oh, yeah, you know, looking ahead at 2018 and it was like, it's Monday. Right. <laughs> it's literally right around the corner. Now, do, a matter of days. and I had a little rest. Uh, you're exhausted because you've been uh, up since, what, how long? Um, well, I got home around 1 a.m. Oh, it's all right. It was a lot of fun. I'm so glad I did it, and I'm happy to be here on the couch. Good so. stuff. We've got a little coffee. We'll be all right. Are you warmed up? Um, I think so. It's still so cold out, though. I can't. I, I, I'm, like, already ready for spring. Can you think of a time that you were ever colder at work? No. Okay. Or maybe in life. <laughs> all right. Well, more than a million people braved the bone-chilling weather to ring in New York City in, uh, ring in the new year in New York City. Temperatures plummeting to just 10 degrees, the second coldest New Year's celebration in Times Square on record. And I can attest to that. It was even colder in Chicago at just zero degrees. Oh, my goodness. For the countdown to midnight, uh, in San Antonio, Texas, thousands of people try to stay warm to watch the fireworks. And in downtown L.A., there were no fireworks. Instead, people ringing in the new year with an incredible 3D video display. Oh, wow. Look at that. Some, so uh, yeah. Some of the more unique celebrations also taking place across the country. In Brasstown, North Carolina, they celebrated with a possum drop. And the city of Atlanta lowering down an 800-pound peach. Looks tasty. All right, but what we really, really want to know is how did you spend your New Year's Eve? How did you ring in 2018? We want you to send us your photos. We want you to send us your New Year's resolutions that you want read on camera. So, you know, be sure. judicious. Friends at, or, and send it to friends at foxnews.com. Uh, we want to hear from you, so send them uh, our way, and we will read them uh, here in a little bit once, once we get them. And we can start with Lisa's video <laughs> of how she rang in the New Year last night. With a jacket, with Ed Henry and <laughs> Superman, Dean Kane. Looks like you guys are having fun. It was so much fun. I mean, I, I literally, it, it was one of the most fun nights I have ever had. I mean, it was so, the dancing aside, um, I know it was bad, so I'm sorry to subject everyone to that. But no, I mean, we just had so much fun, and Dean Kane and Ed Henry are both, uh, you know, such cool guys, so much fun. So we basically just spent two hours laughing, having the time of our lives. You, you know, you basically had a free concert with all these uh, major stars playing behind you. Uh, everyone was so excited. People were dancing. We were dancing badly, obviously, as no, you saw. No, I disagree. That was beautiful. Um, and there was some was really horrible stuff. singing in between commercial breaks that, think, thankfully for the people at home, they didn't have to hear it. Oh, you thought um, they were in a commercial during the singing? <laughs> yeah. No, but they did. They did sneak in a couple times because they would cut to us during the performances without telling us. So that's where some of the bad dancing happened. So we thought nobody was watching. When in fact, uh, a lot of people were. Peter Ducey, what did you do? I was asleep. Yeah. Yeah, I had a cheeseburger at about 6.30. <laughs> Wild. And it put me out. Wild. I Wild. got you beat. Chinese food at 5.30. <laughs> in bed watching the riveting Panthers 
Falcons game. I fell asleep at about 6.15. So wild got a, times. Uh, really, really wild couch. Well, you know, here are some stats on how a lot of Americans spend New Year's Eve. 92% of U.S. adults celebrate the holiday. 70% of Americans stay up past midnight, uh, unlike this couch. This, or actually, I did, but for work. <laughs> 54% of Americans, 21 and older, uh, consume liquor on New Year's Eve. The most of any holiday, 360 million glasses of sparkling wine are consumed in the United States each year on New Year's Eve. And 49% of Americans planned uh, last night to spend their New Year's Eve at home, like these two guys on the couch yes. to my right and left. So, uh, you know, you uh, you know maybe uh, didn't have some of the, the wild festivities or, or the champagne well, what that I was we doing, just talked about. Lisa Marie Booth was kicking <laughs> off my New Year's resolution, which well, was, was that? well, I was trying to eat healthy, but I don't think the Chinese, they pound and a half of Chinese Yeah, food I was going to say, you both um, are kind of off to that, a bad start like, on that, that front. It's going to start today. And speaking of which, obviously, that's what everybody does this time of year. 47% of men likely to make a New Year's resolution for 2018. 53% of women likely to make a New Year's resolution this year. 63% of those age 18 to 29 are likely to make a resolution. 68% of those who made resolutions in 2017 say they kept at least part of their promise, but my gut tells me um, they're all lying. Well, so here's the thing. If we're going to ask people at home to let us know what their New Year's resolutions sure. are, are for uh, 2018, then we need to hear yours. You know, it's so funny. What, Yesterday, Peter, what's your New I Year's said resolution? I, I, Made one up yesterday. I said that I wanted to make breakfast before I went to work on the Did hill you because today? not a ton of uh, no, not. Oh, today. okay. Well, so actually, back, back in Washington D.C. Uh, once I get back to D.C. and the producers were listening, and today at 9:50 they're going to have somebody come on to show me what to make. Very, very helpful. So, so you'll be able to a get tease. a jump start. Yeah. How about you? Um, so New Year's, you know, I joked last night because we had a, a woman that came on that sort of specializes in helping people attain. Their, right. um, obtain their, their New Year's Eve resolutions. And I told her, I was like, look, you know, what if you just have the same resolutions each year? It makes it easy. You don't have to come up with new ones. It just, you know, keep it, keep it running. She didn't, she didn't think that was a good plan. Um, so, <laughs> well, you know, if you do you. the resolution, yeah. if you actually follow up on it, then you don't need to do it. I don't, your year. logic is just, um, no, well. so my, my, you know, mine is actually to travel more for okay. fun. And to, you know, kind of take a little bit of time to, you know, travel the world and, you know, take a little bit of time for me and, and sort of enjoy those travels. So that's, we'll see, it probably won't happen, but cool. we'll see. Todd? Mine's pretty cliche. Uh, during the Christmas episode of Fox and Friends I was hosting, and my wife said, uh, your gut looks fat. So uh, my resolution <laughs> will be honesty. to lose the gut. That, that's some really, some <laughs> hard-hitting honesty. Hitting honesty. honesty. So, uh, yeah, I got to do something, and I'm going to do it. Yeah. Well, President Trump is somebody who uh, made a lot of promises during the campaign. He kept a lot of them. He's been going out on the trail, touting promises that he made, promises that he says that he's kept. We heard from him last night during the very glitzy Mar-a-Lago New Year's celebration. Happy New Year. We're going to have a great year. It'll be a fantastic 2018. We're off to a very good start, as you know, with the great tax cuts and Anwar and getting rid of the individual mandate, which was very, very unpopular, as you know. But we are going to have a tremendous year. The stock market, I think, is going to continue to go up. Companies are going to continue to come into the country. And uh, they're doing it now, soon to be a record clip. Am I allowed to comment on fashion? Because that's quite a dress. See, I'm like, Melania Trump always looks so stunning and so beautiful. I just want her wardrobe. Sure. It's probably way too more expensive uh, than I can afford, so I'll never have it. But she always dresses, she, you know, she's such a classy woman. She always has beautiful clothes on, um, always looks stunning. Uh, but, you know, so for, for what President Trump said, I mean, I think a lot of people, you know, really don't kind of dig into exactly what was all accomplished with the tax reform law. Because we have to remember, too, as President Trump said, it's also getting rid of the individual mandate. Right. It's also a drilling in Anwar, something that proponents have been trying to get done for 40 years. So not only in just one week alone, they were able to get done uh, tax reform, something they've been talking about for 30 years. As I just mentioned, Anwar, drilling in Anwar, 40 years. Uh, repealing the individual mandate, something that Republicans have been talking about through the entirety of the Obama administration. So, I mean, th that right there are three massive wins and points on the board for President Trump. So he's got to feel pretty good, as we just heard, uh, heading into to yeah. 2018, which is actually today, and I keep forgetting that. And with that as the baseline, <laughs> listen to this tweet that he wrote. Uh, this is pretty typical Donald Trump. I mean, he really kind of hits it all here. Uh, as our country rapidly grows stronger and smarter, I want to wish all of my friend supporters 
enemies, haters, and even the very dishonest fake news media a happy and healthy new year. 2018 will be a great year for America. He really just kind of does it all right there in that well, tweet. I mean, I think they've had a really great relationship. I mean, you can really tell that the media just loves him and that he just really loves the media. I, I'm joking, obviously. You know, I think you're picking it's up. It's a new year. That they're it's making a new up year. Things could no, change. All right, so what do you think? 2018, how's the president going to do? Send us a tweet, Fox and Friends, and uh, we'll look at it. But until then, Jillian. Yeah, it's not all fun news, unfortunately, on our New Year's Day. Uh, it's we got not. Some sad news we do have some sad news. Actually, a lot of breaking news that we're following overnight. So let's get you caught up on that, guys, this morning. Starting with this, the suspect behind an ambush attack that left a deputy dead ranted about law enforcement online. Matthew Real fired more than 100 rounds, holed up in his bedroom before being shot dead by officers outside Denver, Colorado. Three deputies, one police officer, and two civilians wounded in the attack as they responded to a noise complaint. We got three officers hit. One down. All of them were shot um, very, very quickly. Um, and uh, they all went down uh, almost within seconds of each other. The fallen officer is identified as 29-year-old Zachary Parrish. The husband and father of two young daughters was on the force for seven months after serving two years as a police officer. His wife says he loved this job more than any job he ever had. Friends remember him as selfless and went to him for spiritual and scriptural advice. Law enforcement lining the streets saluting Parrish's body in a show of respect. President Trump offering his condolences online tweeting, quote, we love our police and law enforcement. God bless them all. All of those wounded are expected to survive. Ten Americans are dead after a fiery plane crash in Costa Rica. The small charter plane crashing into the mountains and bursting into flames shortly after takeoff. Incredible video of the aftermath showing fire and broken jet parts. None of the 12 people on board survived, including a family of five from New York. There are also reports of two Florida doctors and their teenage daughter among the dead. The crash is under investigation. California pot shops are preparing for their first day of legal recreational marijuana sales. The state is now the largest to legalize recreational pot. Adults over 21 can possess up to an ounce of the drug and can grow up to six marijuana plants at home. Other laws also taking effect today. In Tennessee, institutions now forbidden from uninviting speakers on the basis that their presence may be met with controversy. And Illinois is commemorating Barack Obama's birthday. They'll honor the president on August 4th. That's a look at your headlines. So, guys, a lot of, a lot of sad news yeah. to start this year with. A lot, stuff, yeah, a lot of stuff that we're heading into 2018, but uh, we're thankful for you to bring it to us. Thank you. Jillian. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. It was a cornerstone of President Trump's campaign. Take a listen. We have to start by building a wall, a big, beautiful, powerful wall. Now he has a new promise, no wall, no deal for dreamers. So what happens now? Former Hispanic advisor to the Trump campaign, Steve Cortez, waits Man. next. It was the disaster the world couldn't stop watching last New Year's Eve. A big issue in 2018, which started today, is going to be immigration. And President Trump says there will be no DACA without the border wall. He tweeted, quote, the Democrats have been told and fully understand that there can be no DACA without the desperately needed wall at the southern border and an end to the horrible chain migration and ridiculous lottery system of immigration, etc. We must protect our country at all costs. So will this be the first order of business in 2018, or will the dealmaker-in-chief get something done? Here now is spokesman for the Hispanic 100, Trump Hispanic Advisory Council member, and also Fox News contributor, Steve Cortez. Hey, Steve. Good morning. All right, so let's get right into it, Steve. So we're going to see some showdowns, uh, particularly with immigration coming up, both with the spending bill on January 19th, which Congress has to deal right. with, uh, President Trump has given Congress until March to specifically address DACA. But here's the thing. Immigration activists have been pushing Democrats uh, to use the spending bill as leverage to get something done on immigration. So how do you see this going down? President Trump says, I need the wall. That's probably not something right. Democrats are, are going to want to give on. So how do you see this going down? 
Well, I do think that we're going to see the deal maker in chief, uh, the author of the art of a deal, uh, comprise a deal here on DACA. And I do believe, and I disagree with some of my colleagues within uh, sort of the team Trump on this issue. I do think that the DACA people who came here uh, not by their own choosing, who came here as children, they are a different category of illegal immigrant. I think the president showed great compassion in extending this six month window so that we can figure out a permanent fix. He's not going to do it the way Barack Obama did, which he thought he was a king and he could wave his scepter and just make them legal. That's not the way our our constitution works so he wants to do it the right way having said that uh, while I do want those young adults protected uh, clearly we have bigger immigration goals and the president was extremely clear about this on the campaign trail uh, that we need to get control of our immigration system which right now is out of control uh, for example uh, right now the majority of of legal immigrant headed households in the United States are on some form of welfare. Uh, well, that's just not right. It's not fair to the American taxpayer. It's not good for our economy. So we have to do it better. One way to do it better is to end chain migration. So, Steve, there's going to be this big meeting at the White House on Wednesday where DACA is on the agenda. Mick Mulvaney is going to be there from the budget office, the legislative office. Director Mark Short will be there. For the Republicans, they're going to have Speaker Ryan. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, then on the Democratic side, Minority Leader Pelosi and Minority Leader Chuck Schumer. Steve, if the Republicans blink and they make a DACA deal without a fully funded border wall, do you think that conservatives are going to start to call for Speaker Ryan and Leader McConnell to go? Oh, I think absolutely. Look, that would be the swamp at its very worst. And again, I want DACA people protected, but it has to be part of a compromise. If they were to cave and simply uh, protect the DACA people without anything coming in return regarding the border, regarding chain migration, regarding the lottery system, uh, to me, that would be just a capitulation. And by the way, too, I would say this about the Democrats. They try to port, uh, pretend that they're just so compassionate toward illegal immigrants. The reality is they want illegal immigrants to be amnesty because they want their votes. Okay, let's just be clear and honest about that. It is a crass vote grab, and they believe that if they do amnesty them, they'll get their votes going forward. Now, look, I'm not anti-immigrant. Far from it. I'm an Hispanic. I'm an immigrant son. Uh, so is the president, by the way. A lot of people don't know that. He's married to an immigrant, of course. Uh, we love legal immigration and what it does for this country. We have to do legal immigration better, though. That's number one. And then number two, we have to end illegal immigration. The president's already made great strides at doing that at the border. Illegal crossings have plunged 60 percent. And according to ICE director Tom Holman, he says this president has done more uh, to, to protect public safety and to restrict illegal immigration than the previous six presidents combined that he served. So he deserves great credit. But now great. we need to finish the job. Thank you, Steve. We appreciate your time today. And Happy New Year. Thanks, Steve. Thank Thanks you. for joining happy us. New Year. All right, so coming up next, it turns out that dirty dossier was not the only plot to smear President Trump during the campaign. A brand new bombshell this morning. Plus, as protests turn deadly in Iran, where does America stand? Lifelong Democrat Alan Dershowitz says President Trump is already succeeding where President Obama failed, and he joins us next to explain this all. 23 minutes after the hour now on New Year's Day. Some quick headlines now. A man caught with an arsenal of weapons on the top floor of a Houston hotel had them there for, quote, safekeeping. That's what 49-year-old Russell Zamba told police after being arrested at the Hyatt Regency before a New Year's Eve party. Cops finding an assault rifle, guns, and ammo inside his hotel room after trying to arrest him for being drunk and for trespassing. That New Year's celebration still went on without a hitch, but this one, unfortunately, did not. Don't you hate it when that happens, guys? An 80-foot tree bursting into flames at a party in Russia, but the celebration raged on. No one was hurt. As for the tree, unfortunately, as you can see by that video, it did not make it to 2018. Always remember the tree. Oh, uh, <laughs> Hashtag. Well, anti-government protests in Iran growing even more violent. The biggest uprising there since 2009, Obama's first year in office. President Trump firing back as the Iranians had their <coughs> online access shut down. The president tweeted, Iran, the number one state of sponsor terror with numerous violations of human rights occurring on an hourly basis, has now closed down the Internet so that peaceful demonstrators cannot communicate. 
not good. Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz is a lifelong Democrat and author of Trumped Up. He called Obama's handling of Iran a failure and joins us now to explain. Good to see you, sir, and Happy New Year to you. Uh, happy wanna, New Year to everybody. Thank Hi, you, Professor. I want to ask this question right off the bat. Do you think President Trump's stance on Iran helped lead to these protests? Well, one hopes so. I think uh, President Obama made it clear that he was going to stand behind the Iranian regime. He was going to send them lots and lots of money. Of course, some of it was their own money, but still, they used it to foment terrorism, to export terrorism around the world. And I think President Trump has indicated that he will not stand behind the Iranian regime. Look, the Iranian regime is failing. The people there are hungry despite the infusion of cash. They want a change. We can't do very much to bring about a change, at least overtly. One hopes that the CIA may be operating behind uh, the scenes and lending some support. But this is something that will happen in Iran. The United States will only be able to have a limited role and hopefully will be a positive role. I think the president can also try to engender international support for uh, the real people of Iran. Look, Iran is the most secular, democratically oriented group of people in the Middle East. They have been repressed now for so many years by the Ayatollahs. If they had their wishes, if they had a genuine election, they would overthrow this regime of religious thugs and substitute a real democracy. They've never had a real democracy, but they had the Shah, and the Shah was a lot better for America than the Ayatollahs. So, you know, I hope that the international community will show some support for these brave and bold people instead of just standing by and supporting the Iranian regime. You know, Professor, you talk about sort of President Obama turning this blind eye in 2009. And we also, there was a recent political report about uh, him essentially trying to block uh, Project Cassandra. Uh, basically, you know, an investigation into Hezbollah, Hezbollah excuse me, an Iranian proxy, this billion-dollar-a-year money laundering uh, and drug operation that was going on. Uh, there's, and there's been other accusations of turning a, bl a blind eye to Iran's mm -hmm. hostilities. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, what, was that, what has that impact been uh, on the state of affairs for our nation and the world? Well, first of all, it's important. If the Hezbollah story is true, and we have to see it confirmed, but if it's true, it certainly puts the lie to the fact that presidents are not allowed to tell the Justice Department what to do. President Trump is being blamed for telling the Justice Department what to do. And here we have at least some evidence that President Obama told the Justice Department to go soft, to go easy, maybe even to end a serious criminal investigation. What I think it showed the world and the Iranian leaders is that President Obama wanted this deal too much. And that's not a good negotiation. He was willing to give too much to get it. He got very, very little in return. What we have now is an Iran poised to become a North Korea in eight or nine years. And we've learned from North Korea how difficult it is to negotiate once a country has nuclear power. And if Iran develops nuclear power with its hegemonic interests in the whole Middle East, they want to control all of Iraq, Syria, Lebanon through Hezbollah. And if we let them do that, they will become the most dangerous country in the world, not only to American allies like Israel, but to the United States itself. Mm -hmm. Alan Dershowitz, thank you very much thank for waking you, up on New Year's Day with thank us. Thank you. Happy we'll New see Year. You. Happy, Happy New Year. Many to you. more times in 2018. All right. So coming up, Defense Secretary James Mad Dog Mattis has a <laughs> message for America on this New Year's Day. I'm saving money. For bombs. You're going to love this. Thanks. <laughs> and after a, a year of national anthem protests and highly partisan politics, can anything be done to bring our country back together again? Our political panel is going to weigh in on that next. Plus, uh, did you party a little bit too hard last night? Not us. <laughs> well, not us, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you out there did. Well, stick around. The three things that'll cure that hangover that are literally in your kitchen right now hmm. is your shot of the morning seen first on Fox. President Trump. Coming through for his supporters again, this time by inviting them to lunch. I wasn't invited, but our commander-in-chief surprising the group who congregate every day outside of his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida, holding pro-Trump signs. Lisa, they not only got lunch, but as you can see, a lot of photos. Well, I hear the, the chocolate cake is good. But he gets two scoops of ice cream. You!
But we don't know one. if anyone else has asked for two. True. That was very, where the story went wrong. Very valid point. With that, Mr. Ducey, number two. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So a new year means a new start after a 2017 of ugly identity politics. So will 2018 bring more division or is there a chance for unity in the next 365 days? Here to weigh in, our panel, attorney Kisha Heaven, along with Kathy Barnett, who served 10 years in the Armed, Force, Armed Forces Reserve, excuse me, and attorney and former prosecutor Elliot Felix. So, Kathy, first, identity politics did not work in 2016. Trump is president. So yes. is there any reason to think that the game is going to be different and that they would work in 2018. In 2018. You know, I, none of us have a crystal ball up here on the panel today, but I think it's very appropriate in order to know, to look at past behavior, in order to give some insight on what's going to happen in 2018. And as we do that, we look to see, well, what did the Democratic Party and the mainstream media bring us in 2018? They brought us, or 2017, they brought us the great Russian collusion with President Trump. And after a year's worth of investigation, all, only collusion that we were able to find out was between Hillary Clinton and Russia with the Uranium One deal, as well as uh, President Obama with Hezbollah in order for him to get the Iran deal. Uh, the Democratic Party in 2017 brought us the hashtag resist, being obstructionist, not even going to the White House in order to have a formative meeting with the president to add some positive things into the uh, conversation. They also brought, and, and I think this is very dangerous of what we saw at the the end of last year, 2017, is when they began to weaponize the Me Too movement into a political strategy to start picking off different people, uh, like Judge Roy Moore, for example. So if we're looking at what's going to happen in 2018, we can look at 2017. I think it's very difficult for Zebra to change their spots, and I think we're going to see much of the same. And Elliot, what do you think? This idea that people's <laughs> politics are just based on something specific that they all identify for, is that going to... Okay. I, I think there's plenty of blame to go around, okay? There's nothing wrong with saying to people, I want you to empathize because of my unique circumstances. I want you to try to understand that I face different challenges than you do. That's fine. It goes too far, though, when you start to discount other people's ideas and suggestions and solutions by labeling them bigot or this or that. But I think there's plenty of blame to go around. Let me be clear. Both parties, I think, have to some extent exploited pre-existing divisions for their own benefit. Our the midterm is going to be decided by identity politics, Kisha. Right. Well, I'm, I like to think positive and, and be optimistic, but I do realize that the only way we will see a change for the better of this country is if both political sides are able to focus on their core values and not so much of who's right and who's wrong and, and mudslinging. And hopefully our president will uh, refrain from attacking personal citizens on Twitter. And, you know, we just saw one of the largest organizations in the United States being the NFL take a strong political position so hopefully things like that will get this country or our, our, our government to realize we need to be unified and, and to focus on what's best for everyone and so I, I guess identity politics we don't know yet how they're gonna play in 2018 but 2017 ended with a big policy victory for President Trump with these tax cuts going through so I guess I would quickly ask you guys all before we go is there any way for the left or liberal groups to effectively counter what the Republican argument is going to be throughout the campaign, which is, we just gave you guys more money in your pocket. You know what? There is a tremendous amount of disinformation that's that's being um, pushed by the mainstream media as well as the Democratic Party. So, and and as well as some rhinos as well in the Republican Party. So it's going to be very difficult for I believe for the American people to really understand what this tax bill means to them on an individual basis until after April 15th or until we actually begin to go down that process. But again, I uh, I think all that the Democratic Party has and the mainstream media is a bunch of anger, a bunch of mud slinging, and I don't think you can really reason with people like that. Elliot? You, you got a 51-49 Senate, you're not going to get anything done without building some coalitions, getting some compromise. Interesting. Kisha? Yeah, well sometimes with the, like with the tax uh, bill, the new bill, you, you have to see what actually happens. It may sound nice and sound great, but until we actually feel the benefit, meaning the middle class or the Democratic Party or anyone who it's supposed to help out, it's really hard to predict whether it's a win, in my opinion. All right. Well, a lot of campaigning is about to start because it is officially 18. So, 2018. Uh, Kisha, <laughs> Kathy, and Elliot, thank you guys all very much. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, upstairs to Jillian. Good morning. A happy New Year to everybody. Let's get you caught up on some of your headlines. Starting with this, five Americans among the 10 people killed in a fiery crash in southern Mexico. Just take a look at the images. A rented van carrying a family from Washington State along a popular tourist highway that leads to beaches on the Pacific coast. The van slamming into a motorcycle and another car, then bursting into flames. It's now just a pile of charred metal. The cause of the crash is still unclear. I'm saving money for bombs. That's the reason why Defense Secretary James Mattis says he doesn't carry challenge coins. The no-nonsense retired general making the comment after a reporter relayed a question from a Marine who wanted to know if he had the coins on a trip overseas. Challenge coins are traditionally given to service members as a sign of gratitude. All right. This tells you exactly what's going through her head. Uh, now that you've She's made open. it to 2018, you deserve a breakfast of champions, even if you had a rough night out. Well, fortunately for all of us, here are some hangover cures that are right in your kitchen pantry is chef and nutritionist Diane Hendricks. Uh, first of all, Diane. Ready? We've been wanting to do that. So, yeah. All right. So what do we what do? We do? So we're, we're not hungover, but I'm not going to lie. There's, there have been past New Year's days where sure. I have. So hope my parents aren't watching. But no. OK, so what do we do? What, what's the first step um, New Year's Day? What do we do to recover? Well, I was thinking about it. I did a little research. There's really no magic potion. I mean, it really wish what works was. the best for you. I know. I wish there was as well. So what I came up with is to rest, rehydrate, and replenish. Okay. I mean, just the three R's for hangovers. Sure. So um, rest, you want to get your rest. Go back to bed if you can. At, at 10 o'clock Eastern, please. <laughs> yes, at 10 a.m. Thank you. Yes, you can yeah, call yeah. into work if you have to. I mean, you should have thought about that the night before, <laughs> but there you go. And then um, to rehydrate. I mean, you want to drink water, but you don't want to drink it too fast, especially if you're feeling sick. So do that slowly. And then we have like electrolyte, um, electrolyte and vitamin and mineral drinks like coconut water or green drinks some cranberry juice and a virgin Bloody Mary. I don't believe the hair of the dog works. I think it just kind of starts it. it over again. I mean, you may be using new alcohol, but it's ever it's eventually going to go back so to the old alcohol. Oh, yeah, and ginger and peppermint are really good. And pickle juice. They do it in Poland, man, and they drink a lot of vodka, and they all feel good. So <laughs> um, so pickle juice, a couple of shots in the morning is supposed to work as well. All right. okay. I'm going to start having that with my coffee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so sometimes, you know, if you're hungover, I'm just hypothetically, not hypothetically. Thinking, hypothetically. <laughs> hypothetically, you know, you're really hungry. So, like, what about that? What Anything that kind of cures it or, or, or what are your thoughts there? I see some food here. Yeah, well think about what Which you're craving. Delicious. You're probably craving burgers and, you know, greasy food, but that's actually not a good thing. Okay. So, um, you know, salmon has um, omega-3 fatty acids and some cream cheese. Number one is really protein because your body is breaking down the protein into amino acids mm. to really break, um, to fix your liver. <laughs> Go ahead. I know so you had your eye on that the whole time. Going so protein it. type of things like scrambled eggs and salmon and um, chicken soup and over there I have cottage cheese which okay. is really fantastic because it, this particular one Muna is very high in protein it's got you know low sugar and uh, fresh fruits and it's really delicious so protein a good combination of protein and vitamin and mineral um, uh, foods. Uh, a turkey burger. I mean, you're craving a burger, go for something a little bit leaner so you don't have all that grease setting okay. in. And this is in case you just don't feel like chewing. So what is this? <laughs> you make, it's just a smoothie mixed with oh. bananas, uh, foods that have a lot of potassium. So what about like an Oreo smoothie, no? Yeah, yeah throw some Oreos <laughs> in there. I wouldn't mind. And tell us about the Dig In box. It's Got Dig In with Chef later. Diane Hendricks. Just like uh, the chefs come on and I have a restaurant, that's my restaurant. I just launched a um, subscription box service with the largest gardening and uh, web Website in the country Good so you can you. grow indoors 12 months out of the year well, we were talking about that because I'm like okay when is this like fake basil you no know, no you Todd, said you Todd wants a box 12 months out of the year you, so you, how do you so how do you get one then you go to uh, diginonline.com and you can uh, register you can do one month three months it's really awesome so you get gardening and culinary and oils and spices and gadgets cool. and all that and there's an egg separator in there Peter oh good. so I didn't realize that so later on we're well, gonna be using that so awesome. hold on to that because he's gonna need some tips he's gonna need uh... <laughs> right and how far in advance does somebody need to start planting uh, if they're going to have a hangover? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't even answer that. You stumped me on that one. <laughs> All right. Well, we will be back a little bit later with Diane Hendricks. Yes, thank now, you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thanks. Well, a major update on Senator John McCain's battle with brain cancer. When will he return to Capitol Hill? That's what we want to know. And Bitcoin has made average Americans instant millionaires. But do you have a better chance at winning the lottery than striking it rich with cryptocurrencies? We break down the better bet next and hopefully get an answer as to what the heck is Bitcoin?